Yo, hey there everybody. Uh, so today I want to do a little uh, discussion on uh, free, kind of the difference between free hubs and free wheels and cassettes and uh, just the various interfaces. There's a lot of um, confusion, I think, even amongst some experienced mechanics on spacing and what fits what and everything else. So yeah, I thought I'd just have a little discussion on this today. So if this is something you're going to find interesting, please stay tuned. Um, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing or, you know, if you find this video useful, hit that little applause button there and you can uh, help me out a little bit, help me finance some of the, what it takes to make these videos and such. But anyway, without further ado, uh, so basically uh, when you consider a, what you call a free hub, versus a free wheel. Uh, so if I take these two, this is a cassette, set of cassette sprockets, Durace, and this is an actual free wheel. They look pretty similar, but the difference is gonna be the free wheel, it's got the, your ratcheting mechanism built into the, the cluster, I guess you could say. So it's, you know, if you can hear that ratcheting sound there it's kind of quiet but basically they all have the same purpose in that you know this one it's going to uh, basically screw on to the hub itself as you pedal it drives the hub as you coast you know it allows you to coast there so it's kind of a one-way ratchet um, you know similar to just as far as your free hub the ratcheting mechanism is basically interfaced into the hub itself. So you've got your ratcheting mechanism here, your cassette sprockets will slide on and attach. Um, and so, yeah, that's the, that's the main difference and kind of the reasoning behind this. The cassette's a little more of a uh, recent design and it, I think the reason is they kind of came up with this design was just because as, um, well, let me just show you this, for example. I've got a freewheel hub here. I don't know if we can get all this in here, but basically you've got the bearing sit under here, and you've got this spacing that has to compensate for, like let's say we we're gonna put this freewheel on here, that's gonna thread onto this hub shell. We've got our threaded section there. You can see the threads inside the free wheel there. The downfall to these is that so with your free wheel your bearings sit here and then you've got another set down here just puts a tremendous amount of stress on this axle so and the bearings themselves so you'll have these bearings are going to fail the axles are going to bend whereas on a free hub the bearings sit really far outboard you know as technology in this section has gotten wider to compensate uh, for the wider stack of gears, basically. That's kind of why the freewheel system is basically, you'll just see it on really inexpensive bikes these days. There's not really any high-end bikes that are gonna be using this system anymore. Uh, so, as far as free hubs, we've got, um, I would say four distinct interfaces as far as the cassette cogs onto the onto the free hub body itself you know and then from there there's even different spacings and things like that where i think that's where things really get confusing but uh so this is a this is a mavic free hub body um so this one it's the you can see there's like some little I don't know how well that is easy to see, but you can see some little teeth in there, engagement points, where some little ratchet paws will engage into. And so this is just a standard Shimano uh, nine spline free hub, which is by far the most common. This is, as far as SRAM and Shimano, they both use this same exact interface as far as their cassette sprockets that go into here. Um, so from here there's you you basically there's three different widths you've got uh the you know the older like a seven speed 
size. There, there may have been actually one that was narrower like before the seven speed came out, but a typical seven speed from end to end is 31 millimeters. Uh, there's, you know, the eight, nine, 10, which is all the same spacing, which is uh, almost 35 millimeters. It's like 34.95. And then this one is, would be considered an 11 speed spacing, which is 36.75 millimeters. Uh, so try not to get so just all these numbers out here make it super confusing. This was like the original Mavic uh, Shimano interface and I think this actually came out before there was even 11 speed cassettes which got an 11 speed cassette here. Um, and so what you would have to do before is you'd run this little 1.8 millimeter spacer and I think they based this width off of a Campanolo um, interface which is doesn't use a nine spline it's slightly different uh, we're not really going to go over the Campanola one you know it is that that's in another interface though altogether but the spacing is um, you know on a 11 speed Campanolo is the same as this so the 11 speed Campanolo came out before so either which way you can run a 10 speed on this with the spacer or you can just stack your 11 speed cassette straight onto here um, so at some point, uh, Shimano, I think was the one that came up with this, which is what they called their Dynasys system. And anything that's bigger than, as far as your largest position cog, that's bigger than a 34, it uses, even though it's 11 speeds, as far as the spacing on the actual cog. So we could take our spacing from, you know, if we were to measure the depth of this, um, it's going to be the same across this board, but the the actual from this end here to the end of the first position cog is the same as 10 speed. And that's something, I mean, it, I never had that explained to me. I just, you know, the first time I put a, a lot of bikes nowadays are coming with a 34 tooth um, cassette sprocket as far as your large, the largest cog there. I think this one may be a, I don't know, this is a, maybe a 28, I think. So anything 34 or bigger, you, this plane here, the sprocket actually comes inboard towards the spokes because the spokes are naturally, as they come off the hub, they're naturally going to curve inwards towards the rim. And so what you would kind of what they come up with is that, you know, from this flat plane here, they can extend these larger cogs over just a slightly. So the benefit of that, if you have an older 10 speed free hub body, you can actually run an 11 speed cassette as long as the large cog is 34 teeth or bigger. It's like I made a video a while back on my commuter bike. I've got a 10 speed Shimano hub on it and I've got a like an 11, uh, like a 46 uh, Sunrace cassette on there, which it same spacing so it fits fine there's other several other manufacturers that are doing that same thing so um and then at some point SRAM came up with their eagle system where they started doing a 10 tooth uh, as far as the, like the smallest cog this is an 11 the smallest you can get on this free hub body is is going to be an 11 tooth um so yeah i mean i They've kind of it's got a little reinforcement around this edge, but that's you know if you just kind of look at how where the this part comes in, you can't really get anything smaller. Or it's just gonna there's not gonna be enough material for it to be substantial enough. So kind of what they did here on the uh, this is what they call it. this is SRAM's this is actually a a, a stands hub. But it's got the, you know, the XD driver interface. So what that does, the spacing on this is actually the same overall as a 10 speed, which I'm trying not to be over confusing here. There's XD and then there's what they call XDR, which this portion, portion right here is going to be a little wider. And that's for a lot of the 12 speed uh, SRAM axis stuff or the road stuff it's going to have 
you'd have a wider cassette because the largest cog is smaller than 34. I think they have like a 33 and some are maybe even smaller, 28 or something like that. I'm not, I can't really remember right offhand. Either which way, you can, you can run any of the mountain bike Eagle cassettes on an XDR with a spacer, the same as you would run that spacer, the 1.8 millimeter spacer on these to run a 10 speed. So hopefully that makes sense. When you get the, the bigger it is here, they can angle it inwards. You can take up less real estate on your free hub body. So they came up with this design where you've got your same nine splines here that are very similar to the Shimano spline system, but then it tapers down. The threaded part is here as opposed to, you know, a lock ring on these that threads in on this inner part, holds all the, you know, packs all the cassettes in there. So you got your threading inside of there, or XD, the threading is here. So I made a, I made a video, I don't know, a few weeks back on uh, how to install an Eagle cassette. So I'll, you know, put a link to that here. Uh, so, yeah, that's, um, okay, so you got, you know, that portion of it, and then another, I don't know, thing that's, I see a source of confusion is the actual free hub body to hub interface. So on this particular one, I'm not even sure what this one actually goes to or what it is, but uh, this may have been off one of the three Paul DT hubs or a Bontrager or something, but this is like a, so you would have your set of teeth that look similar to the inside of this, that would be inside your hub shell. And then you've got your three paws that, you know, as, the, as you're, you're driving, you know, as this turns, it engages into the teeth on the hub shell. But then as the hub moves and coasts, it basically just, you know, slides right over those rings. As you pedal, it engages in, and that's what drives the wheel. Uh, this one, I mean, that's kind of the beauty on some of these that are, you know, like a through axle style this and I think you just pull this that end cap off and then this will you can just pull this whole thing apart it's easy to service and clean that's your actual axle there I've kind of got it partially disassembled but this one is looks like it uses a six pawl system and then you can see how closely spaced all the the teeth inside of there are so uh what the difference there is that you're going to have uh like closer engagement points so this one you can see it, you barely move it and it engages and then there's some that are way tighter than this uh so you got this system here which i would consider this a, an, another paul system you've got your like a ring drive or kind of your ratchet rings on like say uh like a dt hub those are probably my favorite because they're the easiest to pull apart and clean and everything else and uh they make all kinds of free hubs that um i kind of filmed a little footage the other day on uh doing a swap on it actually it was an xd driver we had somebody that we were putting a just a regular shimano um cassette on so it's pretty straightforward you just pull it off swap out the little two there's two little ratchet rings that engage the teeth engage into each other and then depending on how small the teeth are that's going to give you your different engagement points uh, so there's you know those are really nice and then there's like your chris king hubs that are you know you're going to get different sounds from all your different hubs but you know the chris kings have a uh, pretty tight engagement points but there's some hubs that are you know some of the i9s and onyx and some of these others that are really they're really close so the the thing with the benefit of those is you know you're coasting and like say you're at a lower speed and you need to get back in the gas it's like there's not that slack of like where you're pedaling and it takes a second to engage it's like instant transfer of you feel it right through the pedals like you're as soon as you start pedaling you're instantly you know there's not like that lag of you know where you have to pedal and your cranks move you know five to ten degrees before they actually engage into the hub and you know and drive your hub there so uh that's 
the, you know, the thing there, uh, Shimano kind of answered their to this. Their, Shimano's answer to this, like the 12 speed Eagle system of SRAM, was a uh, they did the uh, their micro spline system, uh, which is you know, it's pretty decent. I, I think it's a, a good system, it's basically more or less based off this, it's just a little smaller. Uh, it's got more splines and stuff, I think, but it, I don't know, it's not as easy to install as, as a SRAM Eagle system for, um, for sure, but it's still, it's still a decent system and pretty easy to install. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, I think that's mainly the gist of it. There's so much more to it than that as far as getting into the different ratios and everything else. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff being it's a basically as of this writing or this video we're in a kind of a global bicycle parts pandemic so a lot of these cassettes and things are actually pretty hard to come by but anyway yeah hopefully you found the the video informative if you have any if you if that just added to your confusion just shoot me some uh shoot some questions there in the comments and i'll try to answer them there as best i can and anyway yeah that's going to do it for this video Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.